The Matrix, Bo Burnham, Meta Content. <laughs> ah. There's a new Matrix movie that came out recently and it's divisive. But this is not a video essay about The Matrix. The Matrix is a sci-fi classic. Here's why. What went wrong with The Matrix Resurrections? An unprecedented cinematic rage disaster. Ah! Part 1 of 7. I'm not here to emotionally validate your preconceived biases about a piece of media. Functionally, you can break down the script, the story, the characters, camera movement, sound design, editing, meticulously analyzing the logic puzzle as to why something does or doesn't work. But arguing about movies gets boring. Sorry. I don't give a damn about filmmaking technique. I operate in the realm of vibes only. Wow, movies are so enjoyable. Here in the realm of vibes. Words like cinematography, bad writing, it's all noise. Language has no meaning anymore. Let's go back to monkey. Better yet, let's go back to the matrix. Part one. What is the matrix? Have you never seen The Matrix before? Why are you watching this video? If you've been living under a rock, The Matrix is a 1999 sci-fi action film written and directed by the Wachowskis. It depicts a dystopian future in which humanity is unknowingly trapped inside a simulated reality, The Matrix, which intelligent machines have created to distract humans while using their bodies as an energy source. When the computer programmer Thomas Anderson under the hacker alias Neo uncovers the truth, he is drawn into a rebellion against the machines, along with other people who have been freed from the Matrix. But you already know that. What can you say about the Matrix? The film is perfect, perfect. striking the optimal balance between action and philosophy. Do you want to contemplate the nature of reality? I got you. Do you want to contemplate whether free will exists? I got you. Do you want to watch Kung Fu Cyber Jesus do flips and shit? I got you. This movie is so good, I want to die. The Matrix franchise tends to attract two different kinds of moviegoers. Film watchers, cinema sponges. Number one, it appeals to a surface level reading of the sci-fi in action. This is what happens. This is a story. Characters do X, Y, Z. World building lore canon by Packable D, D main minor. Number two, it appeals to film and philosophy nerds. The kinds of people who look for deeper meanings, symbolism, themes. What is this trying to say? What does this mean? Very artsy fartsy. Both can overlap. Neither is better. They are different ways of viewing media. Hence the divisive reaction to the latest Matrix film. The first movie asks the question, what is the Matrix? And you can answer that literally. The Matrix is a computer generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. Or symbolically. The Matrix is everywhere. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. Because the Matrix isn't real. It's a movie. How you see what you see is what you believe. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Reading the Wikipedia can only get you so far. What makes The Matrix 4 stand out is that it's a metatextual movie, which analyzes the franchise itself and the nature of its own existence. Within the narrative, the story of the original Matrix trilogy is woven in as a means to keep Neo within the Matrix, and later on utilized as a way to get him out. Nothing comforts anxiety like... Little nostalgia. While there is plenty of commentary on contemporary society, it definitely isn't subtle when it comes to its views on corporate IP filmmaking. I'm sure you can understand why our beloved parent company, Warner Brothers, has decided to make a sequel to the trilogy. A major gripe about this approach is that the Matrix movie, about how they shouldn't have made another Matrix movie, ultimately becomes another Matrix movie. It wants to have its cake and eat it too. We had style, we had conversation, not this beep, 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 beep. It's so meta, very meta. But you see, that's actually the point. You either dig it or you don't. That the film is doing meta commentary is more fascinating than the commentary itself. Hence it works better as a piece of art rather than an actual film, <laughs> strangely enough. I watched the film and watched as the internet interrogated the film interrogating itself and I began to see the matrix. The rabbit hole goes as deep as you want it to. You don't have to take the red pill. Once you've seen one angry review of the matrix four, you've seen them all. You know what they're gonna say, the criticism, the flaws. You know what the comment sections are gonna be like under clips from previous films. You know the kinds of people who are gonna love it or hate it or fucking, 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 fucking. 
I died. Why do I have deja vu? We can't see it, but we're all trapped inside these strange repeating loops. Once the film is made, the events remain static. What happens in that two hour time frame doesn't change, but the art changes as you change. When the second and third films came out, most people thought they weren't that great. Well, I didn't really like the sequels when I initially saw them, but after rewatching them recently, my opinion has changed, which is fair. But how much stock can you put into people's opinions in the moment? Nobody knows anything. I can't even trust my own opinions. I rewatched Reloaded recently, and my favorite scene went from this to this. I'm just as surprised as you are. The Matrix Reloaded, the horniest Matrix movie. All the boring philosophy scenes I hated as a teenager were more engaging. I could understand what they were going for thematically, but that mech fight at the end of Revolution still drags. Even though the first Matrix had less technical action than its sequels, it's still more thrilling to watch because the stakes are clear. After Morpheus does a katana slice, car flip, here's an Uzi, bang, 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 now go boom. It's like, where are you supposed to go from here action-wise? If you don't care about Neo or Trinity or love, the latest film can fall flat. Lana Wachowski has said that these characters helped her grieve the loss of her parents, and she needed a story where two people came back to life. And so it comes across as a very personal film, relying heavily on the connection between Neo and Trinity. Despite having arguably the weakest action scenes in the entire series, the emotional stakes were sufficient enough for many. That they fight is not as interesting as why they fight. Ah. <sighs> But this isn't a video essay about the Matrix. It's about the meta. Part two, the meta. Meta is about itself, X about X, requiring a certain level of self-awareness, or at least that's how I'm trying to tie these two ideas together. Whenever I criticize something, my ethos is to approach the subject with empathy and understanding, but that may not be enough. Who am I to judge? How can I, as a person, be critical of anyone? Do I abandon human form and become a video essay? Hello, I am the content. It's easier to criticize something already made than it is to make something from nothing. To sit on the sidelines and go, it sure zigged instead of zagged. It's so, it's so simple. Duh. Go ahead. Totally eviscerate that piece of media you don't like. What happens if you turn around and apply the same level of scrutiny to your own content? <laughs> Uh oh. Guess what? Your media review, analysis, commentary, content can be just as lazy and predictable as the entertainment industry is critical of. Complaining about unoriginality in Hollywood is unoriginal. Surprise! But it's fine, it's fine. Becoming and being self-aware is not pleasant. When you've been emotionally invested in a movie for the past hour, your roommate walks in and barks, Hey, what are you watching? Who's that? Why are they crying? And it totally takes you out of the movie. This is Bo Burnham's latest Netflix special, Inside. Featuring a variety of songs and sketches about Burnham's day-to-day -day life indoors, it depicts his deteriorating mental health and explores themes of perform- perform- perf perform- performativity and his relationship to the internet and the audience that helped him reach, as well as addressing issues including climate change and social movements. More lighthearted segments discuss online activities such as calling one's mother on FaceTime, posting on Instagram, sexting, and video game streaming. Blah, but you already know that. Some critics saw imagery of Burnham as Jesus. Wow, really? What can you say about Inside? The special is so good, I want to die. The songs are silly, but it's also very meta. Even more meta than the latest Matrix movie. Um, Self-awareness does not absolve anybody of, of anything. Am I balding? Bo Burnham is a comedian and performer who asks whether the world needs his comedy. The same comedy that's informed by his identity. It's who he is. It's what he loves to do. But because of internal and external factors, Bo finds himself stuck in a room making content. Can one be funny? When stuck in a room. What happens when you can't go outside? What do you do when you are completely disconnected from those closest to you and your ability to perform in front of others? Maybe they don't need you. Ah, <sighs> but maybe they do, you ask, trying to justify your own existence while questioning your very existence, slowly sinking deeper and deeper inside. What happens when you try to be funny stuck in a room? Got it good, now get inside We're going to go where everybody knows everybody Pray for me, Bo says. This special broke me. I can't do this anymore. I think I'm, I'm done. Hey, how about you try next time? I want to hear you tell a joke when no one's laughing in the background. When I'm broke and at my lowest point, call me up and tell me a joke. 
Oh shit. You're really joking at a time like this. A lot of layers to the special, a lot of interpretations. Don't overthink this. I can't help it. While Inside is funny and clever, ultimately it wasn't the comedy that really resonated. White Woman's Instagram is a song where he's literally describing things, displaying the shallowness and superficiality to social media. But when song and screen open up to a sincere reflection of human connection, I cried because I love my mom. Aww. Can you be funny while stuck in a room? The answer is no. You can't spend all your time inside. You will go crazy and want to die. You need a real life and real world connections with people. Don't keep everything bottled up. By sharing what's going on inside, we can relate to one another. Realizing that we aren't alone in these feelings and experiences. Sometimes you just gotta get through whatever it is you're going through. And maybe one day you can look back and laugh. It's tragic not being able to go outside. But tragedy, over time, becomes comedy. There you go. That's the value. Bo makes a literal difference metaphorically. The special feels genuine. But you know Inside was a performance, right? Bo wasn't actually stuck in that room. There are deliberate choices made with the editing, camera and mic placements, even little background noise sound effects. However, it's presented in a way that effectively blurs the lines between reality and non-reality. But this isn't a video essay about Inside. If you want a deeper analysis, you can go watch FD Sing the Fire or CJ the X. Both are great, I prefer the latter. But it's the internet in the future. I don't know how long this take is gonna be good for, so I am preemptively canceling myself. Much like Bo, CJ's ghost is performative as well, leading heavily into that creative, verbose vernacular. What did I write? Words and ideas coming right at you, hitting that sweet spot in the brainstem that makes you go, a Canadian Zoomer kid, Jordan Peterson, without the baggage. They also make music. I think I'm an addict, want the world and I'm a habit, I'm so fucking dramatic. Also very meta, very fun. I'm highlighting CJ because out of all the Burnham video essays, it stayed true to the spirit of Bo. Like Burnham, CJ is grappling with similar issues. What does it mean to be a human being living in the current digital age? To what degree can there be authenticity with cameras on us all the time? How the fuck are you supposed to talk about self-awareness without coming off a bit pretentious? Speaking of self-awareness. This is the part I had to rewrite and reshoot because I didn't know if I was making a salient point. It's the part of the video making process where I listened to what I wrote over and over again, realizing that none of it made any sense and didn't contribute anything at all. I call it my middle of the video hump. Honest to God, the thought crossed my mind. Stop it. Get some help. But sometimes you gotta believe in yourself more than you believe in the sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> So here I go. There's a section during Inside where Bo satirizes how brands using their brand awareness to enact social change just ends up bringing more awareness to the brand. In a very literal sense, it is a comedy performance by Bo where he's presenting his own brand, which is comedy. But also, his brand is literally comedy. Sure, you could say he's riffing on jokes he made earlier about trying to change the world through comedy, which would only bring about more attention to himself. But in a grander sense, the entire special is a part of his brand. However he expresses himself within Inside, comedian, performer, visionary, auteur, auteur, director, that's his brand. He may not have said that explicitly, but CJ did. I put myself in the very weird position of making part of my brand, drawing attention to parasociality with a hostile tone while also actively cultivating it with my audience. Am I a hypocrite? Not really. What's the difference between authentically connecting with an audience as a performer and crafting a parasocial relationship? They're the same thing. It's funny to me that the one video essay most on brand with the spirit of Bo deliberately tells you their brand. I'm a performer. It's the thing I'm good at. I want it. What I want to do with an audience is give them that shock of authenticity. I want to give the joy of excellence. I want to provide the transcendent high of art. I want to communicate something long form, intentionally, in a curated fashion designed to affect people and create more beauty in the world. Even though a video essay and a Netflix special might seem different, remember, both Bo and CJ are doing the same thing. You are yet developing an emotional bond with me. I thought it would be funny to emphasize the one-sided nature of that bond, and it could maybe even potentially help my audience have more conscious boundaries. 
I fret on occasion it's done precisely the opposite. CJ in their analysis deliberately breaks the fourth wall, telling their audience this is performance. I'm a performer. It's the thing I'm good at. I want it. I can highlight all I want that this is a transaction we are currently partaking in. I do actually get money from your laughter and your attention. Your one-sided feelings towards me don't mean I have to do anything for you at all. I owe you fuck all. The performer making you aware of the performance is part of the performance. The meta commentary and self-awareness is part of the appeal and absorbed into the brand. There's a bit at the end of their Rick and Morty essay called The Dialectics of Rick and Morty, which is a dialectic between the characters Rick and Morty that plays on CJ's previous analysis of these characters while simultaneously commenting on themselves and their viewpoints as an artist in relation to YouTube. It's great stuff if you can get through the runtime. Y'all out here are pumping out hours of material. <laughs> Bingeable TV miniseries full length features as long as or longer than the actual thing. An endeavor for both creator and audience. Give me my life changing epiphanies in 140 characters or less. Please. Both CJ and FD's analyses are good supplementary material for Inside, but can they be enjoyed without it? What happens when the video essay is better than the actual subject? Does the original art have value if one only derives that value from watching secondhand content of people reviewing or critiquing that art? Seeing as how you can get video essays, reactions, reviews, commentary, rants, more endless content out of endless content out of everything. Like if one can get anything out of that, maybe an emotion, maybe meaning maybe there's no reason for any of us to be alive so let's just be I isn't that beautiful i don't want to waste people's time with my long drawn out opinions but how would i know if i was i was getting bored sitting in the chair that's why i'm here now Ugh, i ripped my pants this would be the part of the video essay where i show you the behind the scenes of like setting up shots and all that stuff <laughs> But this isn't a video essay about inside. This isn't a video essay about video essays about inside. Got boosted yesterday. And I'm not feeling too good. Oh, it's hot in here. Once upon a time in Canada, I was attending a very Canadian university and taking a philosophy adjacent class with this other fellow. One day we got into this very deep conversation about belief systems. I, d I don't remember the details, just vibes. But essentially I would keep positing things and he'd keep coming back with these meta-linguistic traps, questioning every single thing because what the hell is language anyways? I found the whole experience maddening because we weren't getting anywhere. I felt like he was just showing off how out there and meta he could be. Showing off how self-aware you are is useless. It's cringe. It doesn't convince anyone of anything. You don't change people's hearts and minds by telling them that they're wrong or showing off your big brain. You incept the ideas and concepts into their big brain so that they can come to the conclusion themselves. The oracle from the matrix wasn't like, hey Neo, look how smart I am. I made cookies. By the way, you're the one. No. <laughs> Hell nah. She's guiding Neo so that he can walk the path and discover the answer for himself. No one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Years later, I would encounter the same person, except he had taken the form of a YouTuber named Jreg. Gregory Greg Guevara, better known as Jreg, Jreg, is a Canadian Zoomer kid whose content is like a fever dream 2am adult swim program, and I never watched any of those shows. They also make music. Also very meta, very fun. His videos employ many layers of irony, utilizing these sorts of language games, which are just delightful. His commitment to the bit seems forced at first, but much like Sideshow Bob stepping onto rakes, eventually it comes around and becomes funny again. I sort of got his art, but it didn't really click for me until he did straightforward videos explaining his satire and philosophy. Meta irony is what happens when irony and sincerity become muddled together. With post irony, the author still has an intent. They're still trying to convey information to you. They're just taking you through a layer of irony to convey that information. With meta irony, the author wants you to be in a state of confusion over what the underlying layer of sincerity is. Ah shit, this is just dialectics for edgy teens. The ambiguousness and the meta irony are a large part of the art, making it ironic that I need a full on explanation to fully appreciate it. Whose fault is that? The art, the artist, or the audience? A framework is a framework is a framework is a framework understand or maybe you don't and that's ironic which is the point i'm trying to make or is it either the point is obvious or it's obfuscated by layers of irony that it loses the point or maybe that is the point any acknowledgement any comment 
any opinion, whether sincere or ironic, and you're already playing a part in this linguistic game. Any observation about the art becomes part of the art. It's an experience meant to provoke an emotion, which is fine, I guess. Sometimes you want to enjoy the ride, have a few laughs, and other times you get annoyed because this piece of content isn't delivering the information you want, so you're skipping around trying to get there, since there's no way of telling from the outset whether this is even going to be worthwhile because YouTube disabled dislikes. How can you trust them? Why did you even click on this video? What was it about the title and thumbnail that made you go, yes, that one? You could have clicked on any other piece of internet content. When does that split second unconscious decision to click onto something else come into play? How much attention can you put into someone who doesn't know exactly what they're doing? Can you tell the difference between having a mental breakdown or watching one? That is JREG. I have no qualms with JREG. Ultimately, whether I like an online persona has less to do with their content and more to do with whether they remind me of someone I've known in real life. Philosophy nerds, film nerds, Hassan. <laughs> On second thought, Greg kind of reminds me of a friend I had a long time ago, so I'm subscribed now. Yay! This kind of content illustrates the problem with the meta. Dreg expresses a lot of his art through irony. Although he admits irony is a corrosive force. Irony is a corrosive force. If you don't say what you mean, eventually you will forget what you stand for and get lost. And trust me, you get lost. Layers upon layers of abstraction. Thought about thought about thought. It becomes this never ending cycle that can go on forever to infinity and beyond because we are limited by language, convention, and being human. You think you're getting somewhere, but are you? Do you want to? Is this helping? The deeper you go into the meta, the less it becomes about the art or the artist, and more about you. You aren't watching this anymore. You are watching yourself. You are now aware of your breathing, your blinking, where you are sitting, but not physically, mentally. It's frightening to watch someone or something articulate your innermost thoughts, feelings, dreams, anxieties in a way that is poetic, emotional, spiritual, lyrical, miracle, and they are not you. Wait, wait a second. I thought only I think my thoughts. It's challenging. It's provocative. It's like a slap in the face telling you to do better, giving you a visceral feeling of, oh God, is that what I sound like? Is that what I think? If it's already there, do I need to say anything? They're kind of like me, but I don't want to be like them. Do I like me? You observe your own reactions to that and keep asking why. Trying to get somewhere, trying to get to the point, because this is a video essay and it's supposed to have a point. Halfway through writing the script, I realized I was loosely connecting a bunch of threads about meta content, trying to find some insight, only discovering myself once again, feeling inadequate, inarticulate, and not valuing my own opinions because I feel like they will be drowned in an ocean of noise. Why do I have deja vu? We can't see it, but we're all trapped inside these strange repeating loops. This next part of the video was going to be about YouTube meta content in an attempt to tie all these threads together, but my brain exploded. Glug, 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 glug. Here's what I was trying to say. Follow along if you can. I find that. There's something so perplexing about videos on YouTube that are about YouTube, which are then not only bound to that YouTube meta they discuss, but also end up having a meta themselves for their kind of content. A YouTube meta meta, which is surprise, just another part of the overall meta. YouTube. In an attempt to write something coherent about this phenomenon, I watched myself getting too meta about a meta YouTube video about YouTube meta meta and it quickly got out of hand. Why do I have deja vu? We're all trapped inside these strange repeating loops. Am I writing about the deja vu of how I already touched upon YouTube meta content in a previous video? Am I writing about the deja vu on how the meta, whether in Matrix 4 reviews or YouTube advice, produces content similar in style, substance, and execution? Execution. Am I writing about the deja vu of my own insecurities, feeling like my analysis is shallow and I didn't say anything worthwhile? Yet again, it's all been done. Even this joke is the answer all of the above. If you want the full meta experience, click on the timestamp below to experience my mental process. Oh.
A running theme throughout some of my videos is that I'm skeptical of social media platforms. They are impartial, they have rules, they are designed. YouTube is a system, and even the videos created to explain it are still a part of that system. I mean, look at look at the thumbnails. How much of this is basic human psychology versus how much of this is engineered platform systemic pressures? I can't even fathom the answer to that question. But once you begin to see the code, it takes you out of it. You see what people do to get you to click and engage. You see it within yourself. What makes you click and engage? You see the system. You see the matrix. YouTube meta advice content can be useful, no doubt. But once you see these rules bent and broken, it makes you question the importance of all these how-to YouTube advice videos. They tell you to find a niche and grow your audience, except I don't want a niche. Part of my brand has become catering to the anti-niche content crowd. But on the other hand, those channels and their videos on how to get YouTube views have millions of views. So they gotta be doing something right, right? YouTube really fucks with your idea of value. But it's fine, it's fine. I'm not above that. I started making videos because I saw what gets views and I thought to myself, why can't I throw my hat in the content ring? It's mostly ass anyways. <laughs> this isn't an ego thing. Yes, there is good content. And no, I don't think I'm better than the ass content, but rather for most of my life, I've been putting myself down. So I wanted to put myself out there instead. Plus it could be fun. If you suck, you suck, but you already know that's part of the process. And now, in a twist of fate, having lost interest in consuming content, I'm spending less time on YouTube by creating more videos for YouTube. Fate, it seems, is not without a sense of irony. How many matrix analogies does it take to screw in a light bulb? There is no light bulb. Part conclusion. What does it mean? In this hyper-reactive, algorithmically driven landscape, sometimes you can feel out of place. Too much, too fast, too soon, a little bit of everything, all of the time. Me, I, I, I like to sit on my thoughts for a while, come to an opinion, and even then I'm willing to have my mind changed. I'm not a reactionary, I'm not trendy. By the time this video comes out, these topics will be ancient. You're looking at a digital ghost, Spooky. Ooh. This is how it goes sometimes. I laser in on an idea creating this video, which causes me to retreat further and further into myself. And what is supposed to be a lighthearted look at the reactions to the Matrix Resurrections ends up as a mini existential crisis. <laughs> this is what focusing too much on the meta does to you. Everyone is speaking their truth, but does the world need more content? Or to ask it a slightly different way, um, can, can anyone Shut the fuck up. You get into this weird headspace going from why is YouTube like this to does any content need to exist? Does anything need to exist? <laughs> but these thoughts can't keep bouncing around in my head. I can't stay inside. I must get out of here. I must get free. Like making this video was difficult on so many levels. Literally. Just the constant, oh god, what the fuck am I doing? Oh god, what the fuck am I doing? Oh god, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> but I felt compelled to do it. Why? I don't know. You know what that means? It's Latin. It means know thyself. It's weird not to fully know yourself. I've been me for as long as I've been me, and even I don't know me. Know thyself. Even if it's knowing that you don't fully know thyself, and then memeing about it. When doing creative work, sometimes you don't know what the thing is until it's fully made. You can discuss an author's intentions, but sometimes there aren't any. And you're in an internal mess of contradictions because whom among us isn't 100% ideologically consistent with their beliefs and actions? When you say your thoughts out loud, maybe it's not as dramatic as it feels inside. Maybe somebody listens and finds value in it. I did. I think that's what the meta is about. Or the purpose of art. I don't know. Going deep into the sauce and coming out better for it. Trying to gain a better understanding of yourself because nobody really fully truly understands understands themselves. Maybe you don't find all the answers. Maybe you don't need all the answers. Maybe you realize the limitations of language, how we conceive of the world, being human, and maybe you act in spite of that. Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why do you persist? Because I choose to. So I'm giving the Matrix Resurrections a 7 out of 10. Uh 
Freshmaker.